What's up guys? I'm Brett from Rants for Us. As always, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave that comment down below. We're on the road to 1,000, and we hope you guys can help us get there. Alright, so WandaVision, Episode 7. If you have not seen this episode, um, and you're not wanting to know anything about spoilers, um, I will give you three seconds to turn this off because this episode is full of heavy, 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 heavy spoilers. Uh, so, three, two, one. Yay for spoilers. Alright, so, here we go. Um, this episode was probably one of my favorite episodes of the season so far, and that's saying something since I've enjoyed almost every part of uh, WandaVision. I really do believe it's one of the best shows on television right now. Uh, it's definitely one of the most intriguing shows I've ever watched uh, because even the most minute details can be a hint as to what is taking place. I mean, everything, even from the narration of it, you know, where where Wanda is, uh, you know, she's introducing WandaVision and it's like, you know, at the very first part of it, it's like, welcome to WandaVision. And she's like, all excited and peppy. And this last one is like, welcome to WandaVision. I mean, it's like, it's like her, you can, even in the narration, you feel her breakdown. Um, and it just feels like everything about this show is just, every detail, every scene is placed there to indicate some special thing. Like, there's no... There's not just no wasted episode. There's no wasted scene. Um, at least most of the time. I mean, I still believe in the episode. Even the scenes that I did not like in this episode actually will play a role later on down the road. Road. But let me just go ahead and get into it. Um, I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed the very first part of it. The very kind of I guess you could say the intro of it when the kids when. And they're playing their little video games. And then all of a sudden it starts going back. And next thing you know they get back to some Uno cards. And this is where I kind of feel old. Is because <laughs> they're sitting there looking at this. And I wondered. I mean as soon as I saw that uh, that part. I'm like are they looking at this. Because they're shocked that their controllers turned into Uno cards. Or are they really confused about exactly what Uno cards actually are. Like <laughs> it's, it's just one of those moments that I actually felt really really old. Uh, when that happened, um, when Wanda is laying in bed, or lying in bed, I guess you could say, I should say, proper English, guys, um, when she is lying in bed, she, uh, there's so many little details. That pillow, that it looks like it's got, it looks like it's got giant eyes on it, and it looks like it's just staring down on her, these malevolent eyes, um, makes me just wonder if, that is something or if that's just me looking into something a little too deep could very well be of course you know there's a hexagons on her sheets and on basically everything in her house so maybe it is maybe it isn't um but overall um uh, when uh it's just it's just that's one thing like i said i do really i do really love this show simply because you know I'll sit there and I never know if I'm reading too much into something or if this is something that's important, really important. So every time that something would change or something would kind of glitch out, I'd be like, oh, what is in the background of that? And I would, I've probably replayed some of these episodes a million times just trying to get every little detail about it. I'm not really big on the comic book version, guys. So I know a little bit about it. I don't know a lot. Um... All I know, so you know, forgive me if I don't catch all the little details of it because I do know that a lot of people that's watched the comics they are understanding a lot of stuff that's going on that I have no clue to. I have read the House of M, so I do know at least that much. Um, but another thing that kind of uh, I think it's a hint towards something. And I, I, I thought at first, well, is it an X-Men hint? Um, that's kind of like talking about Charles Xavier. Is when Billy says to his mom, My head is hurting and all the, because of all these voices. I wonder if he's hearing the townspeople. 
I wonder if he's kind of like uh, Xavier in um, um, in X Men. If he's hearing all of these uh, voices and he doesn't really know how to control his power, or if there's something else that's going on that's causing him to hear all these voices, maybe, maybe, and I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe if they are part of Mephisto in some form or fashion, maybe all of those children um, are deceased souls and he's hearing them because there's something about when uh, Vision a couple episodes back mentioned about where are the children, why do I not see any of the children out there, and then this episode with the carton of milk that has the missing child on it and then of course you hear um, you hear uh, Agnes talking about I bit a child one time you know what it made me think of when she said that line hocus pocus don't ask me why that made me think of hocus pocus aware that they those witches were sucking the life out of the kids and it just she feels like one of them uh, like she feels like one of those witches off of hocus pocus more than anything I love her character I just love her character completely and totally uh, but that's just what it made me uh, made me think of uh, let's see what else uh, is it uh, uh, I don't understand the glitching um, you know is the is the glitching something um, is that Wanda losing control of the reality around her because she's depressed? It seems like starting from episode one, episode one was my least favorite episode of this whole series. Um, I thought it was incredibly slow. I felt like most of it was incredibly boring. But it did have some moments in it where, um, where I was kind of like, okay, Something's gone off and it's where she's losing control of something because something either catches her off guard or something uh, makes her feel uncomfortable and then the situation around her starts being affected by it. Of course, you know, the whole thing with Vision, she kind of feels like her marriage maybe has fallen apart a little bit. Um, that she's not able to actually control Vision the way that she wants to to be able to hold this all together. And now she's got this extra layer with her children where that she's like, Vision is going to ruin this and here yeah, we've got children together and uh, what's going to happen to them and all of these different things that's going on. So, I mean, you know, I could see as a parent, as, you know, husband, wife, you know, in those situations, I could understand where she's coming from. She's trying to hold things together and everything's falling apart around her and she's starting to lose it feels like she's losing control with this illusion that she's got and that's the reason that's my reason why she's glitching out that's at least what I'm thinking uh, when it comes to that um, but yeah I mean there's that um, I, it's either that or the hexes got so big um, you know, of course, when she stretches it out, the further and further she stretches it out, um, you know, it could mean that her power can only go so much. You know, she was controlling a town. Now she's controlling a larger swath of no telling how long uh, and how far it actually went. It must have gone miles and miles. It could be that she stretched it out so big that... Um, that you know she cannot control it anymore at least that's at least that's what um, it's it's stretching her means let's just put it that way that's how I see it at least um, another thing I don't want to and again this goes back to the hocus pocus thing again don't ask me why I'm stuck on hocus pocus now I just am the circus thing why why the circus why the circus? Is it because she feels like they're clowns? Or is it because, uh, you know, I, I, I think to myself, what attracts children? The circus. 
uh, you know things along those lines things where you know something like that's going on so you know when you have a circus coming to town of course you're gonna take your kids to go see it most of the time or at least people used to so it kind of just makes me wonder if that is maybe Agnes's uh, doing in a way to maybe attract children I don't know maybe attract the children whether she can keep them in a certain spot uh, um, I don't know I don't know what she's exactly doing I don't under you know you know we won't find that out till probably next episode but that's just my key on that I don't understand why why pick the circus that that makes no sense at all not unless it was uh, I don't know I mean now that I think about it I'm, I'm trying to think of all these different ways for it to be that way only other thing I can think about is that she thinks that those um, agents or are, are clowns that that's that's all I that's all I got on that um, I don't understand why Wanda is not um, why she's given up on vision so much um, she don't even try to wipe his memory anymore it seems like um, you know she even kind of admits so much to her children that you know there's only so much she can do and she doesn't have the answers and she doesn't know how to fix things anymore that you know this is this has got so out of her uh, control that she doesn't even know um, know what to do anymore um, I don't know I it almost kind of feels like you're looking at a show that has a marriage that's going downhill and uh, the participants in the marriage don't know uh, how to fix it and uh, you know it kind of reminds me of the dad trying to stay away and the mom kind of in grief about it that's the way it kind of feels a little bit to me and it's kind of really a sad sad thing uh, makes me you know and I thought from the very beginning if anybody was probably going to take Wanda out it was going to have to be Vision because why not because he's the most powerful but because he is uh, that's the thing that would hurt the worst that was that that would be that like if 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 someone else on the outside come in there and took Wanda out it wouldn't have that same impact like if Monica Rambeau uh, chain uh, stopped her or Doctor Strange or any of those people it wouldn't have the exact same powerful effect as what it would be if Vision to is the one that had to take her out that to me would be heartbreaking because not only that he probably would be well he'd be losing his family he'd be losing his life uh, and then he would have to do the one thing to her that she had to do to him and that was killing um, and you know to stop him so I mean that would be heartbreaking I think that would be heartbreaking but but I feel like Darcy and Vision's conversation kind of hinted at that where you know Darcy's trying to explain to him why she's feeling the way she's feeling and uh, you know she's like you know she saw you die twice man one time she killed you the next time she had to watch you die uh, by the hands of you know a villain so I mean you know my Thanos so I mean you know she was alluding kind of to that to a certain extent I felt at least uh, overall I didn't enjoy that conversation at all I didn't enjoy the Darcy vision scenes at all um, I kind of like Darcy and Thor to a certain extent to a certain extent in small quantities but it's something about her character uh, I like her with Jimmy Woo but I don't like her by herself um, I just don't I can she's kind of annoying yes yeah, she's <laughs> kind of funny things but it's kind of like stuff that you would see in like a really cheesy sitcom more than actual funny stuff which I guess that's what they're kind of going for in WandaVision but I just don't like her character in general I didn't like where she thought that Vision was hitting on her I didn't understand that um, you know I I just I just feel like she's a 
feel like she's uh, she's got her place there, where that she's um, you know she's got her role in this series, but I feel, just feel like overall she's just not um, a fascinating character, at least not in my mind. So I don't, I didn't enjoy those conversations, but I do believe that those conversations, when it come to that, um, uh, to to Wanda and Vision and what Wanda had to do to Vision, um, is leading up to something that Vision's going to have to do to Wanda. I do believe that. I hated that scene where they're sitting there waiting for all those different things to go by. I feel like Vision, it doesn't make sense to me. Because Vision's in this car. He can literally fly anywhere. What does he need? What does he need uh, Darcy for in the first place? Like, like, why would he even get in a vehicle with her to go anywhere? It's like, what is she going to do? She's not going to save the day. If you needed anybody, you would need, like, Monica Rambo to do a certain extent to do anything in which we did see later on in the episode but I didn't understand the whole <clears throat> him sitting in the car uh, with her and having this conversation while everything's falling apart around her you know he at this point he he knows that the townspeople are suffering he knows that uh, his wife is having a mental breakdown he knows that there's people on the outside that are uh, threatening to do something to this whatever this is and um i feel like him sitting there wasting his time with darcy sitting in a car watching all the little things pass by and just trying to block them um i kind of feel like that was just a waste of about 10 minutes of the episode um another thing i wonder if that was Wanda that was doing it they mentioned that it was Wanda but what if it wasn't Wanda what if it was Agnes or or the hex itself I always wondered that what if it's the hex that's doing this not necessarily Agnes or anything on some of these things now I get it we do find out that Agnes is behind a lot of things but it seems like sometimes the hex works on its own uh, and that it it it's like a it's like it's almost a living breathing uh, artifact in itself, which it could very well be because you know at the very end of the episode we get the um, you know that spell book whatever that spell book is you know the way it was glistening the way it was doing some things uh, that's obviously a big deal behind uh, what we're seeing with the hexagon. Uh, or the hex itself so I don't know I don't know on that one but I just kind of feel I just again I just felt like I didn't enjoy Vision and Darcy's um, scene I felt like it was waste I feel like Vision could have just flew up there got to Wanda and none of that would have even have happened in the first place I feel like he knows so much now that he should be uh, as a hero should be pressing for things a little bit quicker than what he is instead of just waiting around chit chatting um, You know and I didn't understand why Wanda was trying to keep him home away in the first place. Is it because she's Not wanting to admit reality. Is she afraid that he's going to make her admit to reality? Uh, what is the reason that she's trying to keep her him away? The only thing I could kind of think about is that she's trying to do it because Agnes is informing her to do it. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because Agnes was clearly, um, even before we got the big reveal, um, she was clearly trying to uh, antagonize uh, Wanda to make her feel worse than what she really was. Um, you know take that moment where she's talking to the camera and she mentions uh, you know the camera says uh, something along the line of the camera uh, the director or whoever it is cameraman says to her what well, do you think that you deserve this I mean and she says you know what like it you could tell it was something that actually hurt her and shocked him shocked her that it would say that to her but it was kind of maybe telling maybe her inner thoughts or maybe that is Agnes planning those ideas in her head 
that all of this is your fault and that you're doing this and you should feel bad and that you know but if you don't do it you're gonna lose your children you're gonna lose your husband I mean like that that's a terrible situation she's in and there's no good way out of it there just really is it um, but yeah I mean you know there's that uh, let's see what else did I miss um, I oh Monica Rambo Monica Rambo is one of those that uh, characters that I enjoy her I enjoy the actress who plays her but as far as the character is concerned there's some things that that character does on the show that to me makes no sense whatsoever um, she drilled gung-ho on things um, she didn't act like she was shocked at all that her DNA was changing it played no role in any part of it they tried to play it off as well she's a hero and that's the reason why she's she does what needs to be done but even the heroes pause for a little bit to go oh man what's going on with me you know but it's almost like, kind of like she knew what was going on and she you know it just didn't affect her in the least bit um, but at the beginning or at the end of last episode we saw um, we saw Wanda uh, move the hex and it it took over a lot of the army vehicles turned a lot of them into like ice cream trucks and so forth so when she gets like this I don't know what you call that a moon rover I don't know what that thing is and she goes and she's like I'm gonna go pile through that and for some reason it won't go through it that made no sense to me whatsoever how could that I mean what we saw army vehicles be taken by it why couldn't that one specific thing get through why would it just not allow it to go through it all? It made no sense to me. Uh, and then she gets out of it. And then she's strong enough to go through it. And I was like, whatever. You know, um, that didn't make sense to me. I don't really understand all the different versions of Monica Rambeau in this that we saw. Is this, uh, of course, you know, we hear different voices from characters... Of the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, while she's doing this we hear we see all the different versions of her the ones that was inside the X and outside the X and younger versions and so forth I didn't really quite understand exactly what that was supposed to refer to um, but once she got there I feel like she's not very good at explaining herself she you know when she gets there to Wanda and she said you know she's talking to her and she's trying to explain some things to her and you know of course Wanda's being really antagonistic and threatening um she should like I feel like there's a better way that Monica Rambeau should could have gone up to that situation and been like hey you're hurting these people you're hurting um you're hurting your every you know people that you care the most about or you're saying you you care the most about you're controlling them you're creating something that isn't real this isn't real and you've just got to accept it like I feel like she could have known at it in a more peaceful way but no she kind of went at it as you know what you can try to take me down but I'm gonna take you down first I didn't like that. I just did not like that uh, way of course it was just very antagonistic she wasn't gonna win that battle uh, from the very get-go, but I was glad that we actually got to see a little bit of Monica Rambeau's powers um, Curious as to just how strong she is don't believe she's as strong as Wanda though. I mean um, I did love the blue eyes on that like that was really cool with those blue eyes just glistening uh, And standing out it was kind of eerie in a way, but it was really interesting to see from her but um, You know even going back to the Monica Rambeau, uh, you know, she's going through that, and all those different versions um, show up. I almost kind of wonder if this has something kind of like to do with like time travel to a certain extent. Like all these different versions felt like they were like breaking away, or could, um, you know, you know, consist in some form or fashion. It almost kind of seemed like it was different 
phases of her in different either different realities or different uh, time periods and it was just really weird in that way I almost took it as it was uh, different time periods that was uh, that was breaking away within this this hex um, I don't really understand what that was supposed to have been about but it really was a cool scene I will give it that even though I really didn't understand it um, I, I liked how she was able to actually see the inside of that hex though um, that was actually a really cool scene um, you know you get to see the inner layers of just what that hex actually is um, and it's almost kind of built like a computer I mean it's it's really weird that's the reason why I almost kind of wonder is it magic or is this like some kind of technology because it looks like a technology to me um, I mean you know some kind of time uh, warping kind of thing some kind of uh, well a nexus kind of like what we saw in in the in the uh, commercial I mean it's a nexus of some sort uh, you know you know maybe to another reality I don't know I don't know um, but to me it didn't it doesn't come off as as uh, it comes off to me as a nexus that is technological made not um, one that is magical made actually uh, that's just kind of what what I got out of it um, when the in the Nexus commercial too, you know, even speaking of that. When the Nexus commercial says the world doesn't revolve around you. Um I wondered I, I, I suppose that's something towards um towards Wanda. Um but then at the same time I almost kinda wonder if it was something that was kind of detailing Agnes as well or if that was Agnes um, telling that to Wanda if that was just like another version of you know where the director says to her are you you know do you feel like you deserved it or something along those lines I felt like that commercial in itself is just another version of tacking it on to Wanda it's really antagonistic the more I've watched these commercials and rewatch these commercials uh, they're really antagonistic towards Wanda in a lot of different ways. At least uh, the last few of them have been. Because they've given a little bit of details of what is going on. But they're not... Uh, but it seems like they're they're like more in your face. Uh, it feels like they're speaking to Wanda in her... Uh, you know, just to her. And not to the uh, fans out there that are watching it. Um... I just wonder, you know, even going back, um, I don't understand. I don't understand the ending of it, though. I don't understand why Agnes was, uh, did she want to be found out? Like, what was the point of her telling Wanda where her children were for her to go down in the basement and find all that stuff? She intentionally wanted her to do it. Um... Uh, why 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 not just keep on the ruse and just let it go that way um it almost kind of felt like wanda had no chance in that situation either it was almost kind of like wanda had given up anyways and there was nothing that you know that agnes could say or do that was going to bring wanda out of that situation she had that point you could tell Agnes has full control over Wanda um, because Wanda is so beat down not because necessarily of Agnes's magic but just because Wanda is just so beat down um, you know that she almost allows it to go on uh, I'm just curious to see if next episode if Wanda breaks past this uh, this veil and you know remembers what Agnes truly is or if Agnes right now just comes out and says I'm the one in control I mean after all you know uh, she does go inside you know they go through that whole montage where it shows her in control her placing Quicksilver in there her talking to Vision in the car her uh, you know 
doing it's talking to herb all of those things were then her planting these little seeds throughout this show uh, so it's always been you know she's been one step ahead planting all these little things so I wonder this is WandaVision really the Agnes show like what that was kind of detailing or is Agnes going to get her own spinoff I, I almost kind of wonder I'd almost kind of be excited if they would give Agnes her own spinoff but then the more I think about it I'm like you know what this has kind of been her show like from beginning to end this this has kind of been the Agnes Harkness show like it just feels that way um, <clears throat> I love her character I love her character from beginning to end <clears throat> but my last thing about uh, about this show is um, you know of course that ends that uh, after credit scene where you see uh, you see Monica Rambo uh, going into the little cellar and Quicksilver appears to her. I'm starting. I, w I wonder who Quicksilver actually is. I wonder if Quicksilver. He's obviously not the X Men version. Um, I'm wonder if Quicksilver might just be her son, or he could be Ralph. He could be her husband. I doubt, I, I don't know, he doesn't look like he is. He looks more like a son than he does a husband. But, you know, we'll just have to see. Whoever it is is taking on this form. That's not probably the true form of that person. So, uh, you know, we'll just have to see. I'm curious to see if it's antagonistic towards Monica Rambo, Or if it even feels like she's even a threat to it. Or if maybe it is the hex itself. I don't know. If I had to guess, I would almost say that it is her son, but we'll just have to see. Uh, overall, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was an amazing episode. All I mean, from beginning to end, um, so many questions, so many answers were told, but then so many questions are still left unanswered. So we'll just have to find out in episode eight. So as always, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. And uh, y'all take care.